back for day 24 of the 28 days of Black American History Month. I'm currently in downtown LA. I'm trying to be as like safe and cautious as possible. I've got my mask and everything, um, but we are in public. I wanted to come down here specifically um, because, uh, well, I had errands and stuff that I needed to run um, and like some business that I needed to take care of down here anyway. But it was super convenient with everything that I was like um, learning and um, I randomly stumbled on this memorial that is actually down here. So I told myself like, it just, it, it, it was, I don't know, serendipitous or whatever for me to like have everything that I needed to do down here today and then be able to stumble upon this um, um, throughout my research. Um, I'm currently at the site. So today's video is going to be on none other than Miss Biddy Mason. Um, I spoke on her a little bit last night and yeah, I'm currently at the memorial, but I'm also, so she lived, I'm trying to figure out, how to, okay, here it is. She lived just down the street here, literally where that green sort of, uh, I can't zone. Um, there's like a green little marquee down the street. This is actually where the memorial was. She owned that building right there where that green little marquee is right there that was hers um this space here i'm just gonna keep it turned on my mask so now it's like you know it's a little business area there's like a bank and little shops and stuff which where that marquee was that was where she lived and she also had a commercial space at one point but i'll get to that um I, during my research i realized that um, this was actually here. They did a little like memorial park um, for Miss Biddy. I hope you guys could hear me. I have my headphones on. Um, this is the memorial park for Miss Biddy Mason. There's her picture. There's her picture. Miss Biddy Mason. And this is the little park they established, which. Kudos to them for doing it. Um, you know, this is history that we just did not have. And maybe I'll come back through here. Or maybe I'll just, you know, maybe I'll come back through and read some of these signs. But this was LA at the time. During this time, what's really interesting during this time, just from my research, was that literally like this is the beginnings of LA like literally when she was here doing this business doing this work um which I'll also get to um there were literally like 2,000 people in LA and like 20 or less black folks in LA um but what was interesting about LA at the time was that it was a free state um, due to the uh, compromise of 1850 um, and here's more of the park there's like seating areas and I lived here for like 10 years nine years actually to be exact but I lived in downtown LA for like three years and had no idea that this existed um, and it's been here for a little while let me see if there's more around the corner but it was dedicated to Miss Biddy Mason um yeah there's tons of like little seating areas um okay so this is it you know um should definitely be more but you know it's here <laughs> it's here um a little history about miss biddy so biddy mason she was born um, August 15th, 1818, um, she was born into slavery. Um, she, there's not a ton of information about her life um, prior to her being sold off because she was obviously a slave, but she was a child when she was, she was separated from her family. Um, and she was sold to Robert Smithson um, and then later resold in her teen years um, to Robert Smith. Actually, she wasn't even sold. She was given away as like a wedding gift or something like that um, to Robert and Rebecca Smith. Um, but throughout that time, um, you know, she learned from the other um, enslaved women 
um, medicine, midwifery, nursing. Um, while she was enslaved by the Smiths, um, she, you know, also worked in the fields. Um, she tended to livestock. She did all of these things. Um, and also during that time, she um, had three daughters. Um, in around 1847, Miss um, Biddy and the Smiths, the Smiths joined the um, Mason, I mean, oh, sorry, Mason, the Mormon church, the new Mormon church. And um, they essentially, they joined um, where they were. So they were in Mississippi and it's, um, I know it's up in the air as to whether um, Miss Mason was from Hancock County, Georgia or Mississippi, um, but the Smiths lived in Mississippi. Um, so they joined in, in 1847, they joined the new um, Mormon church. And with that, they, um, so they were there for um, a little while, but within that same year, um, they ended up moving on this, like, um, a lot of the Mormons were um, going on this, like, migration um, west. And they ended up moving, um, so they moved a few places. Uh, they migrated to Colorado. They went through Iowa, Wyoming, Utah. Um, they The destination um, that they were hoping to get to was Salt Lake City, Utah, which they ended up moving there um, for about two years. Um, what's interesting about that is that although, you know, um, just a little caveat, although um, the Smiths had ended up, um, had ended up joining um, the Mormon church, you know, blacks, black folks, um, enslaved folks weren't allowed to join. Um, we were allowed to um, be baptized. They could preach to us um, with the slave master's permission or whatever, but you know, we weren't allowed to join the religion. Um, and a lot of you <laughs> know what's up with that, know all about the Mormon church and what was going on with all of that. But just to get back on track, Miss uh, Biddy um, and the Smiths, um, they ended up moving and migrating with um, the Mormon church um, to all of these different places. Like I said, Colorado, they were there for a little while. Um, they went to Utah, went through Utah, went through um, Wyoming, went through, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm going all over the map. The destination was supposed to be Utah, but they went through all of these states. They literally like were migrating um, uh, obviously they didn't have like planes and things like that um, but they were migrating and you know Miss Biddy was very um, very um, instrumental in that whole process um, you know during that time she was tending to livestock she was um, you know um, you know organizing the travelers she was um, you know delivering babies you know she was a midwife um, she was nursing. She was doing all of these things, all the while taking care of her own children. Um, so they ended up getting to Utah, and they were in Utah for about two years. Um, and I guess there was a there was another um, Mormon sect in California, um, which Robert Smith was thinking about um, going to or whatever. He was warned by his. Um, I guess the leader of the Mormon faith, um, the sect that they were at or in or whatever in um, Salt Lake City, Utah, that if he moved to um, California, that he was risking losing his slaves. Um, of course, he didn't listen, which I'm glad that he didn't listen with his ignorant ass. <laughs> um, of course, he didn't listen. So he ended up actually moving to California. He moved to San Bernardino. Um, he ended up getting like a place um, setting up um, around um, the Santa Ana River area um, and for a while he actually um, had a successful um, cattle business or whatever which I'm sure Miss Biddy played a huge part in that of course she did um, given you know the fact that she was enslaved and given the fact that she had all the skills that he didn't <laughs> um but he, um she the smiths owned about 14 slaves um enslaved folks and 
basically, um, of course, like I said before, during that time, um, just given the Compromise of 1850, which was um, basically put in place um, during the Mexican-American War, um, it was the diffusion of like the free states and the slave states. And basically, um, in California, California was a free state, so um, you couldn't own slaves here, you couldn't... Um, have like indigent servitudes you couldn't like there was a lot of laws in place just they didn't play that here so of course it was still racist like I'm the first person to say like hey California is not this like utopia of like you know it's just not but it was it was ahead of the curve um given the circumstances of the time um anyway basically um yeah the Smiths, they had that business going. Um, and, you know, during that time, Biddy and the 14 other slaves, enslaved folks, were literally here in California. They were free. Like, as soon as they crossed the border into California, not the, the border of uh, the outskirts. And so as soon as they <laughs> entered into California, <laughs> they were free. Um, of course, they didn't know. Um, Miss Biddy, she didn't. Um, know how to read or write and you know a lot of them I'm sure they didn't know the laws but you know they were free um, and it took about four years um, before they even realized this information um, you know during that time they were you know of course building community amongst the other enslaved folks and all of those things and you know as well as during that time you know um the North and the South, the tensions were just increasing and it was just getting really chaotic. So, like, um, Robert Smith, um, he was getting really, like, nervous that he was going to be forced to, like, you know, free his slaves or whatever. So, he actually was planning on moving to Texas. Um, but before he did that, he relocated in this, like, canyon in Santa Monica that was just, like, deserted. So, you know, nobody would know that he had slaves. Um... Biddy, um, of course, like I said, she, you know, made friends and things like that. Um, she knew um, some free folks. Um, there was a woman, Miss Rowan, um, her first name. Um, you know what? Hold on. Because I didn't want to not include them. Because um, there were a few, few freed persons, uh, black folks, who were instrumental in all of this as well. Um, and I wrote their names down just so I didn't forget. At least I thought I did. I'm almost sure I did. You know what? I was more determined in writing it than <laughs> actually getting it right. I mean, the intention was there, but like, I can't even read this. And I'm not going to sit here and try and like... Uh... <laughs> Or actually, that other car might be in the book. Anyway, um, there was a uh, friend, Miss Rowan, um, that was uh, she. She, you know, obviously talked to Biddy and um, knew about everything that was going down. Um, so she notified a friend of theirs, um, Mr. Owens, who was um, a super wealthy businessman. Um, he was black here in L.A. at the time. Um, they all notified the sheriff. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Owens and um, the sheriff, um, they actually ended up going to the canyon where the Smiths were living and served them papers. Um, and Miss Biddy and them took him to court. <laughs> she took him to court. She was fighting for her freedom. So, um... What was crazy about that whole situation was that um, Smith, he obviously was like trying to evade, evade um, you know, what was the inevitable um, of him having to like free his slaves. Um, basically, he had, uh, when, when he was taken to court, he uh, 
came up with this like BS um, to the to the judge and was basically telling him like, oh, you know, we're family. Biddy's our family. The, the enslaved folks are our family. And they told me they wanted to go to Texas. They told me they wanted to do these things or whatever. And, you know, the um, papers, the, you know, what he was being sued for was trying to persuade, um, it says persons of color to uh, leave the state. Um, that was one of the things that was in place um, that you couldn't try and like take black folks or you know black folks into other states out of California to enslave them and things like that. So, um, yeah, took him to court. Um, Smith was just disgusting. He's just a pig, but I mean, he was an, he, he enslaved human beings, so of course he was. Um, he even like uh, uh, persuaded his. Uh, lawyer to like not show or something like that like just was doing all of these like jumping through all these like doing all these different things trying to like cheat the system trying to like well anyway he did all of that for nothing because the judge ruled in miss biddy's favor miss biddy um she got her freedom her and the other enslaved folks um when when it was um when the, I guess the courts and uh, the, the sheriff and everything, the sheriff and the courts and everything was notified that this was happening, they actually were taken to uh, jail, put in a wait holding cell or whatever, um, until all of this was resolved. And when it was resolved, you know, Miss Biddy, she actually got to um, speak to the judge. She couldn't defend herself because that was a part of it. Like enslaved folks, black people couldn't, you know, um, you know, take white folks to court and like. Or, I guess, plead their case against white folks. Um, really crazy stuff. But she ended up actually getting to talk to the judge in his chambers and, you know, tell her piece. <clears throat> the truth. She was freed. Um, and after she was free, you know, um, like I said, there were like two things. Like, L.A. is completely different. It was completely different than what it is now. Like I said, it was still fairly new. Um, it was like literally 2,000 people here. Um... But, you know, Miss Biddy, you know, she used all of her skills um, as a midwife, as a nurse and all of these things. And, you know, she built community. She built community. People grew to love her. Folks called her Aunt Biddy and Grandma Biddy and all of those things. Um, uh, and, yeah, she ended up actually building wealth. Like, she... It, it, she ended up saving like $300,000, which today is about $6 million. Um, so she ended up being able to really like flip everything, um, which is just incredible. Um, she actually, um, you know, with that, she ended up building, um, she ended up buying land, so she bought acres of land. The land that we're on, a lot of it, she owned. You know, we were talking about the land, just tying it into yesterday's video. Like, the land, the land, we are on Miss Biddy's land. Like, this was her land. Um, the spot that I showed you before she owned, she also owned um, space um, on Olive Street, which isn't too far from here. Like, she bought land, and not only did she buy land, you know, she did a lot of humanitarian work. Um, she, you know, opened up her doors to, you know, travelers and folks that just was on hard times. Um, when there was this huge flood that happened um, in L.A., um, there was a store on 4th and Spring. Um, she went to the store and she was like, you know, the folks who suffered during the flood, like, let them come in here, let them get groceries. Like, I got it. She covered the bill. Like, she was known for helping folks that just had it really rough. Um, she uh, she was just notorious for just going out of her way for folks and making it so that folks weren't suffering. Um, she, uh, tons of humanitarian work, which I'm trying to remember it all. Um, she was notorious for going to um, the prisoners at the jail. She was notorious for going down there and giving them the help that they needed. Um, she was just an amazing woman and she did it all out of the kindness of her heart. Um, I'm about to go over here and stand by Miss Biddy, okay? There it is. Um, she ended up 
let's see. So what was I? She did a lot of the humanitarian work. She did, oh, she ended up, um, like I said, she ended up owning the building just down the street. And um, she opened up the um, first African Episcopal church. Almost sure that's the name, yes. Um, church here in Los Angeles, which was the first black church um, here in LA. Um, yeah, tons of really good stuff. Um, she continued, you know, doing her work on her establishments. Um, she ended up, uh, I'm pretty sure she had like some sort of like boarding house situation set up. Like she, she was just doing all sorts of stuff, y'all. Um, and when she first got the space, like when she first bought the land, um, it was literally like, like, um, I won't say swamp land, but like, it was like, um, just like this ditch. Um, and, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The building, um, that was here on spring. Um, eventually, throughout time, she ended up having to, um, she didn't have to, but she ended up selling. Um, she ended up, well, she ended up selling like the, she ended up selling like half. So the first half she sold for like 1,500. Um, she kept the second half and on, She opened up a commercial space. That's what she did. So she eventually she ended up selling half of it. But at first she ended up opening a commercial space downstairs and on the second floor is where she had her apartment. And then eventually she ended up selling like half of it um, for like fifteen hundred. She ended up selling the um, Olive Street property, which when she bought it was three hundred and seventy five dollars. She ended up selling it for like twenty eight hundred dollars. Um, and she was very adamant um, when she first bought her home space. She made it when, uh, you know, again with the land and just like ownership and stuff. Like she was intentional about it. She told her family, you know, I don't want y'all to sell this house. This is our family home. This is something that I want our children to have, our children's children to have. Like I want y'all to keep this in the family. Um, she ended up, which I thought was really sweet. You know, she was big about... Um, making it so that her family could also like own land and properties and things like that so she helped them with that um she what i thought was really cute hold on let me see let me see something really fast she actually um gave her or sold her grandsons at the time who were kids um i remember it she um she sold them land and she sold it for what she wrote and this was her quote um uh selling this property for the love and affection for love affection for love affection and ten dollars <laughs> i think that's what it was um, no for love hugs and affection so selling this land for, uh selling this uh, property for love hugs and affection and ten dollars which i thought was really cute um because obviously they were kids at the time um but yeah, Miss Biddy, she did it, y'all. Um, of course, um, you know, when things got really tough um, during the Depression and things like that, um, you know, they no longer could, you know, they no longer owned um, this property or whatever. Um, and when she ended up dying, um, when she died January 15th, uh, 1891, um, her kids, um, her family, you know, they fought over this state, um, you know, that was a part of it, um, and the property, let's see, the property for a while was, um, owned and taken care of by her grandson, um, but, yeah, they ended up having to, um, to get rid of it, um, but yeah, y'all, that's Miss Biddy Mason. I tried to, if I'm a little all over the place, forgive me. I wanted to get all of the information because, like, I researched her. And I was just so proud because, like, you know, I'm from North Carolina. Like I said, I've been here for, like, nine years and had no idea. I remember actually um, coming across... 
CAM does amazing events. If you guys, California African American Museum, they do amazing events. And there was um, an exhibit just about Black LA in general. Um, and I'm almost 100% sure that Miss Biddy was a part um, of that exhibit. Um, but again, this was years ago. So upon stumbling upon this information, now I'm just like, I have to like pay homage, um, especially as a, you know, um, I want to say transient, not transient, um, as a, um, uh, what's the word? As a, uh, a person who's not from Los Angeles, um, but a black person nonetheless, um, you know, I'm originally from North Carolina. Um, somebody who's been in the city for a while and just like, I wanted to pay my respects. I wanted to pay my respects and just, you know, having lived down here, like this was, these are my old stomping grounds. Like I moved in downtown, you hear me? Like this was my space. Like I still feel super at home whenever I come down here. And you know, the more that it's changing, cause it's changing a lot, it is changing a lot. Um, you know, just with the gentrification and all the things that are happening with the city, like, who would have known that a large part of it, the beginnings of it, was this black woman, Miss Biddy Mason. Um, blows my mind. Blows my mind. Um, yeah. So, I guess what I'll do, because, like, this is the first time that I've been here. Um, I want to read this. We can, like, go down this little wall. It's not super long. Um, it's probably covering, I'm sure it's covering, like, a, the majority of everything that I just talked about. But, like, I want to give it some time. Um, it just, it makes it, yeah, this is, you know what, we're going to give it a little bit of time. Let's give it some time, and I'll finish talking about what I was talking about before. Okay, so, Los Angeles mourns and re reveres Grandma Mesa, Miss Biddy Mesa. Yes. Okay. And this is LA at the time. Like, no skyscrapers, none of that. Lots of just like open land and like trees and, and all of that. Some, you know, some, a little town area and things, but. Out of it, just vacant land, y'all. Spring Street between 4th and 7th is the financial center of Los Angeles, a city over 50,000, including 1,258 blacks, 1890. Robert and Henry Owens, Biddy Grandsons, start a, what is that, livery stable, stable here on part of her homestead when Los Angeles is booming, 1885. Biddy nurses the sick, com comforts prisoners, and pays a grocery at 4th and Spring to feed all the families made homeless by seasonal floods, 1880 through 1890. We talked about that. Oh, and I guess this is, maybe this is the um, blue blueprint of, uh, this particular area where she owned property. I'm pretty sure. She delivers hundreds of babies. More of LA. Look at this. It's nothing like this today. Wow. Biddy calls a meeting here in her home to organize the Los Angeles First African Methodist Episcopal Church, 1872. I almost had it. It was a Methodist church. Didn't know this. She owns land. Deed. William M. Buff Buffum and James F. Burns and Biddy Mason. Dated November 28, 1866. Filed for Request of B, I'm not sure, March 12th, okay. From 10 years wages, Biddy saves $250 to buy this homestead lot three and eight 
Block 7 of the old or of the Ord survey. A bit out of town amid gardens and groves, 1866. She wins freedom in court. Okay. Get into it. Miss Biddy Mason. Smith transports slaves to California, a free state where Judge, where Judge Hayes declares Biddy Mason family entitled to freedom and free forever, 1856. She walks, Californ walks to California behind a wagon. Oh, okay, I guess I started at the end, y'all, because I guess we're going back. Yeah, we are. But y'all got the history because I gave it to you. See that? The United States sends Lieutenant Ord to survey Los Angeles. Names his street Cal Primavera after his sweetheart, 1849. She learns midwifery. Wow. It's Biddy Mason. The Plaza Church is dedicated in Los Angeles, now part of the newly independent Mexican nation, 1821. This woman was born an enslaved person. 44 settlers from Mexico established the Puebla of Los Angeles. 26 have African ancestors, 1781. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, LA was um, founded. A lot of people did just don't know that LA was founded by um, Black Americans and and, and Indigenous folks. Um, and the fact that Miss Biddy, in all of her years, just having been born into slavery and having you know gone through everything that she went through, only to end up you know a millionaire multi-millionaire, owning buildings and establishments in LA, you know, being able to pass stuff on to her family, being able to help so many other people within that time. You know, she was the richest woman west of Mississippi. Like, this is amazing. And like, this space is here in honor of that, in remembrance of that. Granted, I wish that money and I wish this land was still within the family and all of that sort of thing but this is a beautiful thing this is stuff that you definitely don't learn every day that folks aren't necessarily talking about every day and it's definitely important um, especially you know everybody should know but especially Angelinos you know Los Angeles is constantly changing and you know where we are now um, Folks are being forced to leave. Um, it's becoming super elitist. It's super expensive um, to live here. Um, it's becoming more and more white, more and more, um, I don't know, more and more elitist. It, you know, I remember even back whenever I first moved here almost a decade ago now, you know, folks were moving to North Carolina because it was cheaper um, from here. And I would talk to them and they were like, we just could not hack it. And this was back then. Now you can... It's so expensive to live here now. Um, it's one of the top two most expensive places to live in Los Angeles. Um, with COVID and everything now, you know, hearing everybody being forced to leave, hearing everybody, black folks, being forced to leave, um, <clears throat> you know, um, this information just is important. And the fact that um, this is here, you know, it could be more. <laughs> it definitely could be more. Definitely not settling for that. But the fact that it's here, I am grateful for that. And like I said, the fact that I was learning about this and then discovering that this little memorial was actually here, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And just, it's crazy how, how it kind of, how I kind of found it. Um, and I definitely wanted to come here as I was just out doing my errands and stuff to, you know, pay homage to Miss Biddy. Um, yeah. Damn. Like, this was her land. This was her. She owned this. Um, wow. And it just makes me even think about just, like, I know yesterday I talked a lot about New York and the properties in New York, um, or I guess the, the land that we owned in New York. 
um, that was kind of taken away and um, all of those sorts of things. Um, one place I didn't even uh, even mention, Central Park was owned by black folks. A lot of people don't know that either, the history of that. Um, but again, like so many places, you know, I was thinking to myself last night of all the places that I didn't mention that I just knew. Um, you think about um, the islands, the Gullah Geechee Islands in North Carolina, where um, North Carolina through um, Florida, um, you know, Hilton Head and all of that um, towards the coast, like those islands were black owned islands. Those were the Gullah Geechee Islands. And white folks came in essentially colonized and like took the land and like made resorts and like all of this like elitist stuff and like black folks there hurting this was their land like some folks sold um because for various reasons um and you know you know talking about that talking about you know everything that happened in you know rosewood everything that happened in tulsa you know and just like I don't know. It just, it, it blows my mind. And it's just like, when you're talking about, like, again, what we were talking about last night in terms of just like reparations and we're talking about like ownership of land and all of those things, like, you know, I don't know. It's something that just came to mind even just like, I was thinking something that just came to my mind was just like even just going into our family's history and really like uncovering a lot of that stuff because who knows we could like some of us could own land and not even know that we're on we own land or like are entitled to land or entitled to certain things and just not know just because history has made it so that we don't know um it's just it is you know, coming here and doing this research, just, just really, like I said, just doing these videos and stuff and, and celebrating uh, Black History Month in this way has just really, like, uncovered so much that, you know, I didn't even consider um, prior to doing all of this research. And it's a beautiful thing, y'all. Um, y'all know I get long with it, though. Um, last words. Uh, I don't know. I'm just super grateful, y'all. I'm just super grateful. Um, had no idea. Like, I literally lived down the street. Literally lived down the street. I would pass this area all the time and had no idea that this was here. Um, I highly recommend coming to check it out. Um, it's um, 333 South Spring Street in downtown LA. Um, like I said, there's seating areas back here. Um, you know, they have, um, obviously the wall where they commemorate her, honor her. Um, and it's here. It's here. Come and check it out. Um, definitely, you know, get into Miss Biddy, y'all. Um, and get into our history just in general because it's important. But with that being said, y'all, I'm gonna go finish what I got going on. Um, and I will talk to y'all later. I'll talk to you tomorrow for day 25. The 28 days of Black American History Month. All right now, y'all.